Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to Making Games. Tower Defense. So last week, uh, last week's, uh, last week's Tower Defense was a little bit different in that I did a live stream of a fair amount of level design, and we now have not only this level here, which is the, uh, the main level, level one, the campsite, as I have, uh, dubbed it. Uh, we also have, if I were to go back to the title screen, we also have the, uh, the forest, which is just a, a more... Another uh, another foresty area with a bunch of square trees. Uh, we also have not that um, the farm, so we have a a bunch of like cornfields and pumpkins and melons and, and all that sorts of things uh, as a tower defense level, and we can we can send in the uh, we can send in the foes through the uh, the cornfield. Uh, and the other the other one that I designed on live stream last week was the uh, the canyon, which is a bunch of uh, really tall. Um, tall rocks, and it's a, uh, it's a path through a canyon. Okay, this week, I think it's about time that I go and uh, take on a couple issues that have sort of piled up, um, mostly minor issues that have piled up, and, uh, and do some fixes. So this is, uh, this is going to be a bit of a, this is going to be a bit of a regrouping episode. So there's some, there's a lot of minor things. There are things like don't allow the camera to move too far off the map, so... Um, if I were to, if I were to start the game again, you don't want the camera to be able to just, um, just, like, go completely flying off into, into, into the middle of nowhere. If I were to go into a level, you don't want to really be able to just fly very, very far away from the, uh, from the playing field. Um, let's see. Other things that, that I wrote down, uh, extend the ground forward a little bit so that when you do at least back up, you want to be able to see that there is, um, I want the ground to come farther out this way. So that there's uh, there's not just a gaping hole at the edge of the, at, at the edge of the terrain. I'm going to put other terrain in the game uh, later on. Um, there's going to be in the background some. I swear, dog. I'm going to take off that like little jingly dog collar of yours when I'm recording, so you can't do that to me. Uh, I'm going to uh, put some hill-shaped things in the background so that it's not just like completely dropping off, and um, the world just doesn't cease to exist outside the bounds of the playing field. Uh, there's also uh, some bugs with the camera uh, regarding the position, like when you go back to the title screen, when you're on the title screen, you shouldn't be able to move around, that sort of thing. And we're going to be uh, taking on some minor issues like that today. So the first issue I'm going to take care of, I think, is going to be uh, the simplest, and that is going to be being able to move the camera around on the title screen. And to do that, there are uh, several ways that I could just sort of prevent the uh, prevent the camera from updating on the title screen from from moving around on the title screen but the easiest one I think is going to be uh, if in the in the camera's update method here if game dot and that needs to be a dot uh, gameplay mode equals equals game modes dot title maybe I should say not equals game modes dot title uh, we can perform the uh, the actual checks of the keyboard, and that's going to simply uh, disallow us from uh, moving around on the on the title screen. And again, there are other ways that this could be achieved. Uh, I am now hitting WASD on the uh, on the keyboard, and we are not moving around. Uh, there are other ways this could be achieved. Um, I believe when I'm uh, when I'm on the pause menu, I'm doing something else um, in the uh, in the game's uh, update, but this will do here. Uh, we'll just uh, we'll just not process input from the keyboard if you're in the uh, the uh, the title screen. I suppose on that note, I would like to be able to um, like have the player pan around the world with the mouse. Um, I will also write that down on the uh, on this little triage board here. Um, I'll put this as a low priority item since I won't be super torn up if that doesn't like happen. Uh, In any event, let's see. Don't allow the player to move. Where are we? Uh, you shouldn't be allowed to move on the title screen. So that's closed. Okay, that's uh, that's closed. That's an easy one. Like I said, um, in the uh, in ye, ye old GitHub desktop, you can no longer move around on the title screen. Uh, there are some related issues with the uh, with the camera, which is. 
um, allowing the camera to move too far outside the bounds of the map. Um, that's uh, one that I, that I was uh, talking about a little bit earlier. Again, there are several ways that you could do this. There are several ways that you could constrain the camera, but the one that I think I'm going to go with is um, inside each of these, uh, these individual checks for movement. Uh, so when you hit the A key, when you move left, if uh, from.x is greater than or equal to zero, uh, then we'll do this. Otherwise, we will not, we will not actually move if the, um, actually, we'll make this 2.x. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, on the uh, the horizontal because the from x and the two x should be the same point in space, but this should prevent us from going beyond the uh, the leftmost edge. And indeed, we can't move we can't move uh, outside the leftmost edge. And you can still like see off the the edge of the table here, but I'm okay with this being the boundary. Um, likewise, we're going to do the same thing on the on the right side, so when you hit the D key on the keyboard, uh, and instead of being 2.x is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to say 2.x is less than or equal to room width. We are vaguely using room size here. Um, the, the room size is basically the size of the, uh, the floor which exists, which is the playing field, and it doesn't do anything technical. Uh, there's no technical reason to be using the room size, but we'll, uh, it's um, sort of marking the play area. Uh, when you move up, when you hit the up arrow on the keyboard, uh, we will, instead of saying 2.x, we will say 2.y. If that's greater than 0, uh, we will be allowed to um, to move forward. And the down key on the keyboard, uh, if 2.y is less than or equal to room height, then we'll, uh, then we'll move backwards. And this should, uh, this should constrain us more or less within the bounds of the playing field. Uh, if I were to enter a level, and if I were to move this way, and if I were to try and move backwards, this is... Okay, I am still moving backwards. I am actually moving backwards really far. I think that is a little bit farther than I should be allowed to move. And um, when I move forwards, what's the limit? Okay, so I actually can't move more forwards. than So 2.x is um, uh, actually... Uh, 2.y, rather, is quite a bit farther forward than I uh, thought it was. Okay, that's fine. Um, hmm. We could divide by two. Uh, we could. We could instead of uh, instead of saying greater than zero, less than room height, we could say greater than room height divided by two, less than room height divided. Uh, greater than negative room height divided by two, rather, and less than positive room height divided by two. That would do it. We could also just use the uh, the from position, although that would. Um, that would sort of present a, a problem in the opposite direction. I can now go about this far back, still a little bit far, and I can now go about this far forward, which is realistically as far forward as you're ever going to want to go. And... Okay, it seems that we can move a little bit, like, off the, off the edge in this direction, which is... That might just be a problem with the, uh, the size of the playing field. Um, not going quite, f uh, quite to the edge, but... Uh, as it happens, that's another thing that I want to fix. Uh, regardless, we can play with the exact numbers some other time, um, based on based on feedback or something. Um, but for now, uh, camera is camera is constrained within the playing field. Uh, I can go on to. Can I like attach the movement of one of these items to the? Um, the closed list to any specific commit. Can I, um, I can convert to issue. That's like, all right. If I was, if I was already doing that, I would totally be all over that. But I, uh, I didn't actually think of using, using issues like that. Um, this is one of those how to GitHub things. All uh, right, you know what? I don't want to slow down this video by converting all these uh, all these triage items into uh, into GitHub issues. Um, so that'll be just I won't do that for now. And then I do want to do other games like this, other episodic games like this. And um, in the future, when I do other games, I will make proper use of uh, of issues and that sort of thing. Anyway, don't allow the camera to move too far off the map. That's fine. Um, next, when you quit to the title screen, the game goes back to the level select instead of the main menu screen. I don't know if anyone noticed that. I think I uh, I might have mentioned it once or twice. 
It's not a hugely important thing, like most of these issues aren't hugely important things, but if I were to go into a level and if I were to quit the game and go back to the title, uh, we would be back on the level select screen. You could make the argument that this is in fact the desired behavior, but I think I would prefer if we actually went back to the title screen. Um, so, let's see, how exactly does the, uh, let me just take a look at the code in something like the back button for the level select. Um, and, um, what exactly, all right, so it just sets game.current title screen to UI underscore title underscore screen. So I will, I will just append that to, uh, the game over screen screens, uh, the, um, let's see, when you, when you win, when you go back, we're going to set the, set the current title screen to, um, to the main menu. Uh, when you lose, actually, I think it was the other way around, uh, you will, uh, you will do the same thing. And when you, when you're in the quit menu over, I believe this one, yeah, this is going to send you back to the title screen. Okay. So I'm going to hide all of those. Um, this should be all I need for that little issue. Yes, I will restart the game. Thank you very much. And let's see, when I, I'm not going to try and like win the game, lose the game. Well, I guess I can, that would only take a minute. But when I, uh, when I quit the title, we will indeed go back to the title screen. All right, that leads into the, uh, that leads into the other issue of the camera it doesn't get reset when you go back to the title screen. So now I've, I've moved the camera a little in the game level and now I am, um, I'm sort of floating off in the side, floating off to the side over here. Not good. Uh, let me just um, send in everything at once, lose the game on purpose, and see if when I uh, when I say go back to the title screen, we um, we properly do that. And then, do I really want to? It's the exact same code in the in the different in the buttons. So I'm going to say back to the title. We do indeed go back to the title screen. I'm just going to assume that winning the game works because that would be a little bit more work. Okay. That's another issue dealt with. Let me let me move that one over. Um, extend the ground forward a bit so that you can't see the bottom of, bottom edge of the camera. Add some kind of terrain outside the boundary. I'm going to split this into two cards. Uh, one of these I'm going to do today. Um, one of these I'm going to do some other day. It's not like um, for some reason I thought I I thought I messed that up. Okay, it's not like um. It's going to be hugely difficult to just add a little bit of, bit of terrain. I have actually, uh, several times in fact, made a um, made a whole program for for editing 3D terrain, which I um I'm probably going to use just to uh, just to make it quick. Um, that'll be another day though. Right now, I'm mostly intent on um, fixing bugs and probably making a shorter video because these videos have been running a little bit longer as the subject matter gets more and more like specific. Um, anyway, looking at the terrain, the terrain is, uh, generated really at the beginning here. Um, we are, all right, so for one, this is actually like a patchwork grid, which I don't really want. I believe that was done way back in like episode one so that we could, um, we could see something more or less resembling a tile grid, uh, like a checkerboard grid for the, uh, the game area. And I, I definitely don't need that anymore. I just want this to be a flat monocolor grid. That doesn't have really any reason to be a whole like mesh of of many many triangles. All we need are two triangles for this. Um, let's see. So let's pull this out of the uh, out of the out of the loop. Uh, I will sort of un undo all the uh, like the the loop counter variable weirdness. Uh, we can de indent that, de indent that uh, instead of like I times 64, J times 64. We're just going to have triangle zero starting at zero, zero. Um, one is going to be room width and zero. Uh, two is going to be room width and room height. Room width and room height. Uh, three is going to be room width and room height because this is a triangle list and the, uh, the 
third vertex is repeated. Uh, four is going to be uh, zero and room height. And five is going to be uh, back at the origin. And let's see, since I only really, I don't need texture, I don't need normal really. Well, I sort of need normal, I suppose. Um, I almost feel like I should make a different shader that it's a simpler shader for the ground that um that doesn't use the uh, the text chord vertex attribute but that might be a little bit overkill. Anyway, we now have a uh, we now have a, a a ground which is simpler. Uh it doesn't it looks exactly the same so far although the uh the rightmost edge might extend a little bit farther. Yeah, it does. It was like half of a half of a unit short uh the last time the way it was generated in the loop with the um squares of size 64. Uh, it doesn't extend forward, which is more or less what we uh, what we wanted, but we can do that instead of uh, instead of making the bottom edge room height, it can be like room height times one point five, uh, which is uh, more or less that should that should prevent us from seeing a gaping hole at the edge of the world. Um, okay, let me go into a level. Let me just back up, and we now okay. So the tree line cuts off. Um, there may be something to be said for at least in um, at least in the editor mode, so that you can see the exact bounds of the of the room. Or there may be something to be said for like having having the world cut off earlier than that. But um, yeah, I suppose that makes sense. I'm actually going to do that now because I'm probably going to forget if I don't. Let's see. Simplified the floor and extended it a bit. We can we can move that one over to the closed section. Let's see in um in editor mode, and let me just recollapse that recollapse a bunch of this actually. Um, in editor mode, when we're drawing the world, I would like a little bit of a a debug draw thing. Uh, where is render? Render is probably somewhere all the way at the bottom. This is fuse map entity. So that's a big function which I kind of don't need. Uh, save map, load map, and render down here. Um, if gameplay mode equals equals game mode editor, let's see. I'm going to do a little bit of a debug draw thing, and this is going to, um, let me just. Uh, I'm just going to draw a line. I'll say vertex begin. Um, actually, you know what? Can I just say draw vertex, draw begin? How's the uh, how's the simpler? Draw primitive begin. Okay, so I'm just going to say draw primitive begin. This is like the very simple, um, the very simple drawing, drawing primitives and stuff. Uh, the kind is going to be PR line list or line strip. I think is the uh, safest. Uh, draw, draw primitive end when we're done. And in the middle, we're just going to be drawing two vertices uh, to form a line. One is going to be draw vertex, and I'll say draw vertex color so that I can make it red. Um, at position zero, room height, and we'll make it like, oh, do I need, I need 3D position, don't I? All right, well, I'll, um, I'll do some tricks to make it 3D involving matrices. Uh, the color can be C underscore red, the alpha can be one. And uh, at the other end, we can draw a vertex color, uh, room width, room height, uh, C underscore red is the color, and one is the alpha. And... To, uh, to make it a little bit higher in the air. I wanted it to be like 32 or 16 in the air. Matrix set, matrix world, matrix build. Uh, we'll say 32 in the air, no rotation and a scale of one. And when we're done, uh, matrix build identity. And that should give us a line that's a little bit above the ground at, um, at y equals 32. Uh, Z equals 32, rather, in the air. Let me just go into, like, an empty an empty map. Go into edit mode and draw fail due to invalid input layout. Okay. Uh, the shader is expecting draw vertex. The shader is expecting a normal, and I think a texture. Normal, normal color texture? Draw vertex. What are the choices? Give me the choices. Uh, vertex. Oh, we can't do color. I bet that's why I was using um, I was using like a, a vertex buffer. Um, 
over here in the path node part. Okay, well, VB, VB border, and we can we can do the same thing. Vertex end, vertex submit, vertex delete. Um. All right, that's annoying. You, uh, I forgot that you don't get quite as much control over the um the vertex buffer that you draw with um when you're just using like draw draw primitive um vertex create buffer of uh, vertex begin vb border pr uh no it's uh, it's format literally just format um vertex position 3d all right, zero room height and 32. Um, vertex normal. Oh, you know what? You're also asking for the vertex buffer index. Yes, I know how vertex buffers work. Uh, vertex normal is going to be zero, zero. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to give it one just so that weirdness doesn't happen with a, uh, a vector of a magnitude zero. Um, you don't need the color quite yet. Vertex text cord. Uh, vertex text cord is going to be zero zero. You do not use texture at all. We can just have zero on, on all of our texture coordinates and vertex color VB border C red and one. All right, and that is the uh, the part that's actually important here. Um, On the other side, it's just going to be the same thing except a room width instead of instead of zero on the x and vertex end. Okay, that should give us a line. Suppose I could make that a static variable so it's just cleared in every frame instead of reallocated. But anyway, uh, we have ourselves a a error popping up. Oh, is that in? That's because we're trying to load a map file that doesn't exist. If I were to back up. Uh, we do indeed have a line, which is actually a little higher in the air than I wanted to. Let's make let's lower it down to say eight. Yes, this is hard coded. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal because it's just it's just a line that we're drawing for debug purposes. Um, I should probably comment that code so that I like remember what it's there for too. Uh, that's better. Okay, so the line is now the debug line is now being drawn a little bit farther down, and we um. That marks off, don't put trees behind this because it's gonna be largely outside the bounds of the world. Okay. I'll just leave a comment just so that I don't wonder why that's there. Um, draw a Okay. Uh, was that a uh, was that actually a card on on this uh, to do list? I don't think it was. Uh, next, camera position should reset when you enter a map and or go back to the title screen. Uh, that shouldn't be too difficult. We have some camera positions here. Um, let's see. I can. Um, there's a couple ways that this can be done. Likewise, but I think the way that I'm going to do it is macro camera from. Level, I guess I'll call it. <clears throat> and this is going to be new vector three. Um, it can be set to 640, 840, and uh, I want it to be a little higher in the air than it is. Uh, let's say two, 200. Uh, we can also have macro camera two level. New vector three is gonna be 640, zero, and zero. Um, up is up is fine. Up, I don't ever foresee us doing camera roll or anything like that. Uh, we can also have macro camera from title, and that's going to be on the title screen. I believe I uh, I was I was wanting the uh, the default camera angle to be a little bit lower, but the uh, the two position is fine. So when the game starts, you uh, you boot up to the title screen. Um, the from position can be camera from title. Uh, the to position can be camera to title. 
Uh, when you enter a map, let's see, um, what happens when you enter a map? Uh, when you click a button on, for example, the level select. Uh, on click game dot go to level. So when you say go to level, um, which is also what happens when you click the next game, the next the the next level button, I believe. Uh, but we can um, okay. So there's actually like two different functions here. Anyway, we can say self dot camera dot from is going to be equal camera from level. Two is going to be the same, and we can also uh, we can do the same thing when it comes to go to next level, and that should reset the camera every time you enter another level. It will not reset the camera when you return to the title screen. That should probably be its own thing. Um, at this point, I should probably make like return to title its own its own function because I don't believe it is. Uh, anyway, if I were to go to the farm, and if I were to back up like all the way into the corner or something. And if I were to go back to the title screen, uh, the, the title camera is still kind of like all over the place. Um, but if I were to go to, for example, the canyon, the canyon camera is uh, is reset, which is uh, which is the uh, the goal. And we do indeed have a bit of a higher camera angle here, which I think is is desirable because it means that you can um, you can have a bit of a more of a top down view. Um, it's probably a good thing. When you're uh, when you're clicking down on, on the tower defense world, okay, that's gonna be one. That's gonna be one half of this. When you when you go to a level set the camera position, and going back to the title screen is done entirely through UI. Uh, there are, if I if I recall, three places where that happens, and they're starting to to pile up a little bit of code where that happens. Um, I'm going to take this. I'm going to turn it into a uh, into a method of game, which is go. I don't already have something like that, do I? Go to go to title. No. Anyway, that's going to be this, and uh, we can change the game references to self just because that's nicer looking code. We can self dot camera dot from is going to equal camera from title and self dot camera dot two equals camera to title. And now, uh, instead of calling the same like four lines of code every single time we go back to the title screen, we can just game dot go to title. When you uh, when you click on any on any button that would have you go back to the title screen. All right. Because there's no other differences that happen when you uh, when you do that. The other one was in gameplay stuff in the in the quit menu. Uh, there is also a go back to title screen here. Okay, that's good. Uh, I can hide all of that. We should now be able to reset the camera when we go back to the title screen. I will just while the game is loading. Um, if I were to enter a level and if I were to if I were to zoom off somewhere and if I were to quit the game, go back to the title, we have the title, okay? I like the uh, the placeholder. I, I almost don't want to call this a placeholder title image sprite because that's almost like an insult to, to regular placeholder art. Um, I'm thinking that should probably be off a little bit more in the, um, in the corner uh, so that you can actually see the, uh, the little scene uh, below us, but that's good. We can make that commit. We can also, uh, we can do that to the title screen pretty easily. Uh, UI title screen. Let me just... Can I, like, do that? I have UI spray. That's, oh, that's this thing. What's, uh... Let's see. What's, uh, what's there? This one that I was trying to click on is probably the uh, like the game singleton. Okay, so that's more that's more um, off to the side. And you know what? I'm actually gonna take that a step further and graphical stuff, UI, um, 
SPR title of the game, instead of uh, instead of locking that to the middle center, is this used anywhere else? If I change the sprite origin, no, that's not used anywhere else. If I change the sprite origin and change that to the top left, lock that in place, um, I can uh, like move that up there. And then the actual corner of the actual sprite will be in the uh, in the same place, and it won't matter if I change the size or something later on. All right, so game title screen is a bit closer to the corner. Very nice. Um, let's say the camera position resetting. I can close that. Uh, when you restart a level, temporary objects such as flypaper, poison, etc., will still be there. Is that still true? I, it's probably still true. Otherwise, it wouldn't. It would be in the closed section. Um, that's going to be a little more, I think. I recall having to dig around in the code a little bit to find the source of that. Um, see, I've been recording for a half hour today. Not sure how much more I want to do today, considering that this has been pretty much rapid fire bug fixing. To balance the amount of health each foe has tends to contribute more to towards difficulty than the number of foes in each wave. Magnifying glass OP, please nerf. Okay, so these I will I will deal with later. This uh this collision thing, this that's gonna be a whole thing, hence the title of that of that column. So I'm gonna deal with that later. Um low priority, set a base color for the ground for each map. That's that's something else I will probably be dealing with later. When you create a tower, it will be automatically selected. That shouldn't be too bad. To do like right now, um, get rid of the slow duration stat on on slow towers because it's it's pretty stupid. Okay, I will get rid of the slow duration stat on on um on slowing towers. If I were to game entity stuff entity tower, uh, where are these stats tracked? Stats uh flypaper stats dot duration. So if I were to, I think um, there are some other towers that also use a duration stat. That's going to be, okay, I'm going to just delete that from flypaper. I'm going to, I could just leave it there and not put it on the UI, which might be the, um, the better solution. Although that would also contribute significantly to, to code bloat, which I, I'm not really a fan of. I'll get rid of it. Um, because it is it is a fairly meaningless number. That's the other one. Um, that's the magnifying glass and okay, so this is where it's actually. So that should just be a two line of code fix. Um just going to make sure the game doesn't break. Can't see any reason why that wouldn't have worked uh, the way I want it to. Let me toss down a flypaper dispenser. Let me just put you there and let me send something in. All right, if I were to select you, yeah, papers dispensed and victims, which is the, uh, the numbers of interest. Even papers dispensed is honestly not that interesting of a stat, but... Okay, I can move move that one down to closed. These aren't like, I haven't been adding them to the closed list in any particular order. Should I be? Maybe. Um, when you create a tower, it should be automatically selected. I think that should also be pretty easy. Uh, when you, for example, if I were to go back to the UI gameplay stuff, um, UI game, is that the main one? Can I? Hide all of those so I can I can actually see what I'm uh, trying to do. Uh, when you build a tower, what happens is I suppose in the entity tower constructor. Um, what happens when you click on one? Selected entity equals selected entity tower. I'm just gonna say game dot selected entity equals this when we spawn in equals um like the the tower when you when you first spawn it it's automatically going to select itself because it's not like 
I don't think there's ever going to be a tower that is automatically part of the map. Some tower defense games might do that. I'm not going to. Um, let's see. Game dot... Help. Game dot selected empty. Okay, mine's drawing a blank. It's going to equal self. And it should just be self, right? It shouldn't be like self dot anything. Um, that should automatically select ourselves when you want to build a tower. Okay. All right, when you click off of it, it, um... All right, I'm, I won't do it that way then. Because when it's already selected, when you click off of it, it deselects. So instead, uh, let me look a little bit closer at... Should it be in spawn tower? Okay, yeah, because that's also where it calculates if you have things like enough money and if you are trying to spawn it like inside the actual bounds where you're allowed to spawn it and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, self dot selected entity is going to equal player tower spawn. Okay, this should be a better way of doing what I just did. Uh, start, we're just going to... I can't put you down there because there's something wrong with the collision on that map. So if I want to test gameplay, I'm going to have to use the uh, the campsite level. Okay, same problem in that it... Oh, hello. <laughs> okay, I was looking to see if like there were some conflicting conditions and when you click the mouse, it, the selected entity gets set to undefined or something, but no. Uh, we're just, we're accidentally assigning that after player tower spawn gets, um, gets reset. Okay. Logic. Campsite, pebble shooter, and we can have that tower automatically selected, which is what we wanted, uh, ultimately. Upgrade that if we must. Okay. And aside from, like, changing what's visible in the, in the room editor, let me just set that back to what it was before. Or don't, who cares even. Uh, this is just one line of code. Towers are... Towers are automatically selected when you spawn them. Um... Okay, let's, let's knock that one off. And I think that's all I'm going to do today. All right, I spent about 40 minutes just bug fixing. And, um, and other dealing with other um, considerations that weren't maybe all strictly bugs, but things that I wanted to change. Um, things like gameplay balance, I will be doing in another um, in another episode. Uh, this uh, this collision collision painting uh, system that I've uh, that I've mentioned over here. Uh, this is I'm probably going to dedicate an entire episode to that later. That's probably going to be another editor mode, and it's um, it should allow collision with the world to like not be automatically calculated badly when it comes to um. Loading the, uh, God, loading the levels from the file, uh, because that was, that was making things a little bit weird. Um, some other things like level design add some kind of terrain outside the boundary of the stage. That's probably also going to be some other week. Um, and, uh, as far as level design itself goes, I think probably, uh, next week I'm also going to do a, a level design live stream on, um, I think the first one went fairly well. That was a uh, Friday at about... What, a little afternoon um, Eastern Daylight Time, and I'm probably going to do that uh, again. I have some some fun things that I'd like to do when it comes to the uh, the flower fields. Uh, let's see, I, uh, I like flower fields in video games generally. I, I rant out that uh, ad nauseum when I do a Let's Plays. And there's also um, some of the other levels, uh, like pirate, pirate stages. I did go and prepare some... Um, like pirate related 3D models and the uh, the graveyard related 3D models from the uh, the Kenny Asset collections. I don't think they're in the game yet. I'll add those when I do the live stream, and um, I think I'm gonna have a little bit of fun designing levels there too. Uh, don't know if I will be able to get through like the entire rest of the game's worth of, of levels. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more uh, more levels to to design here, but I'd um. I'd like to do the rest of the level design for this game um, in um, in the live stream, not counting minor things like uh, minor adjustments, minor uh, fixes, and that sort of thing, and um, like putting hills, just plopping hills down outside the uh, outside the stage. Okay, so that is going to do it for this week. I'm going to 
let's see, mark this as 0 0.49. 0 0.49, is that correct? I think it is, 0 0.49. Last one was uh, week 48. I'm gonna push that to origin. I'm going to, did I, uh, did I tag a release last week? I, I did, okay. No, I did not, those are tags. Week 48, I did tag a release. So let me uh, grab tag 0 0.49. Um, release title is gonna be week 49. And I'll just say, uh, see the, uh, see the task board for more details. And this is a pre-release and we can, um, I did that URL correct, right? Yes, I did. All right, we can call it for this week. Uh, so let's make a game. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, next time, like I said, is probably going to be another level design live stream. Uh, it's, unless something happens in which I can't do it at this time on that day. It's probably going to be Friday the, I want to say uh, Friday the 13th. Cool, best day for live streams. At, um, 12, uh, 12 p.m., give or take, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Greenwich Meridian Time. Um, you, can, uh, you can convert for your appropriate time zone from there. Otherwise, uh, if you want the code for this, look in the GitHub repository down in the video description. Look for the 0 0.49 release for what happened this week. Um, I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for that in all the usual places. You can uh, have a look at my future plans, see what I'm going to be doing in the, uh, in the coming weeks. You can, um, you can get access to these videos a day early, see your name in the credits, all that fun stuff. Uh, otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one tutorial tutorial as well as just a whole bunch of Let's Plays. So if you're interested in, in any of that, feel free to subscribe. I hope you all found that interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.